Oh my God, these are five ways to avoid CGT, which is capital gain tax on your investment property. Before that, for the noobs out there, what is CGT? In a nutshell, CGT is tax to the government, money you pay to your tax man. It's worked out by getting the net sales price, the price you're selling the property at, minus the cost of the property, the original amount that you purchased it for, including the improvements, minus the expenses of owning the property, and I'll show you examples later, minus government grants and depreciate claimed on the property. So CGT is basically if you have an investment property and you sold it for a profit, well, the government wants to get a cut out of that. Obviously, before the government taxes you on the whole net profit of the sale, you can say, hey, there's other expenses I incurred. For example, you can deduct from the net profit, stamp duty, legal costs, bank fees. Maybe you use the buyer's agent to buy that property, so include those fees, advertising, marketing to sell your property. Also include ownership costs like, you know, property inspection, title searches. If you made improvements on the property, for example, kitchen renovation, bathroom renovation, include that into the cost. So your capital gains tax is worked out from your net profit sales minus all these expenses. That's why it's very important to keep your receipts for all the costs involved with your investment property. Now, if you hold this investment property for more than 12 months or more, you can get a 50% reduction on your CGT tax. If you're part of the buy, renovate and flipping crowd and you've held this property for less than 12 months, it's 100% CGT that you have to pay, no discounts. And if you're a sucker and you sold it for a loss, well, hmm, no CGT. What happens now is that the CGT that we worked out from this gets added to your yearly income from your job, PAYG or self-employed and then then that is timed by the tax bracket in that margin of income. So with that out of the way, here are five things to avoid CGT. Trick number one is to live in your investment property. That's right, make it your prime place of residence for a minimum of six months period. Which means the driver's license must contain the address of this property you just bought. Now this only works if you bought a property within the same state that you're living in. For example, uh, if you bought a property in Queensland and you live in New South Wales, you can't use this trick unless you bloody want to move there. But then, hmm, what happens to your work? This leads to trick number two, which is a temporary absence rule. For example, if you have no other property nominated as your prime place of residence, you can say this property that you're renting out is your PPOR. And you can use this trick for up to six years, which means the ATO allows you for up to six years to say this investment property is your PPOR. That's if you don't have a PPOR nominated. What happens when the six year rule is up? Well, you can reoccupy it, which means you can live in it again, and it resets the six year rule. During that six years, if you sell the property, no CG, GT, but again, consult with your tax accountant. Trick number three, hold on to the property minimum for 12 months. As mentioned before, you get a 50% discount on your CGT. If you made a 100K profit from selling your property, if you held it for 12 months or more, rather than adding an extra 100K to your income and then getting taxed on that, only 50K will be added to your income. Trick number four, buying the property through SMSF, which is your self-managed super fund. If you buy a property through self-managed super fund and you hold it for 12 months, and if you're in accumulation phase, which is basically now till the time before you retire, if you sell the property, the CGT is discounted by one third. So not a lot like the 50%, but hey, you're buying through SMSF. However, if you're in pension phase, in New South Wales is around 66 years old and six months old. It's basically a phase when you enter into retirement or thinking about retirement. If you sell this investment property bought under SMSF ownership, the CGT is zero. That's correct. So if you bought a property and you sold it and you earned 400K, you keep that. The government can't touch it. And secret number five is invest in affordable housing type properties. But you have to be rented out for three years minimum and you'll get a 50% discount plus an extra 10% discount. But you have to prove that this property is registered in community housing holding. That's just another way for the government to reward you for investing in affordable housing for the community. So guys, those are my five secret tips to avoid or reduce your CGT. So jump in the comments, tell me what you think. Did I miss out any tips? Do you have any crazy tips for me? I'd love to read them.